exótica. Yo, people, what's good? It's your boy Remy here from X's Nurse Team, and I'm here today, real special guest, my guy, fresh from the States, Jack. <laughs> Jack Brennan, bro, what's good? Oh, good, man. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate coming here and everything. It's awesome. Hey, how you been keeping, bro? Pretty good, actually, man. Yeah, it's been it's been a year. Like everyone's gonna say that, but I know. it's been good. It's I've, you know I've I've learned a lot. That's what I'm gonna say. Learned a lot. I got you, man. How you been keeping through lockdown? I hope that's not slowed things down too much for you. No, you know what? Like I was just saying, you know, with the gym, like, the gyms are closed for a time in California and stuff, but like. Still been getting the work in, yeah. still been doing everything I can and like really kind of focusing down like, so maybe learn a few things, uh -huh. you know what I mean, definitely, uh, yeah. Got you bro, so yeah, we're going to get right into it my guy. Yeah. How did you get into American football? Um, so for me, I, I used to play rugby in right. school and um, I went to Leeds University and I started uh, playing on their team, Just I just wanted to see how it was and I just ended up really enjoying it really right. enjoying the camaraderie um enjoying like the sport and you know i'm not trying to toot my own horn i was quite good mm -hmm. so i ended up playing i actually i don't know if people know this i actually trained um a summer with the london warriors yeah not a lot of people know that okay so and you went dark yeah i know i do i do go dark <laughs> from it <laughs> but no, eventually um you know the Leeds team we did quite well right. um in the d in d1 and then uh, i played for the o's and mm -hmm. I, you know, met, met you, met everyone, met Coach Neil, all of that. And then eventually from that, that season I played, uh, I got my um, film to go play in, in Europe. Right, so right. That's so that's sort of the basic path. Before you know? we even get into that, oh. dude, like what position do you play? So I play D-tackle. I've mostly played like a, like a nose, like a zero or a one. Right. But I have played the three. It just depends on the scheme I'm in. Um, I probably enjoy the three more, but I'm probably, I enjoy playing nose in certain schemes a bit more. Okay. And also, um, I've played a little bit of O-line. I wouldn't say that's like a secondary position for me, but I, I have played a little bit at various levels right, I see. when, uh, so when can, needs be. So you can play both ways on the line? Yeah. Interesting, bro. That's real cool. Uh, you were mentioning that you went to uni at uh, Leeds, in yeah. Leeds, and you played for a team out there, right? Yes. That was your first contact with football? Yeah, I um I knew a little bit about it. I think I've heard other people say this. Like I started watching like the the uh, compilations online of like big hits and stuff, and I right. was really curious. Found out the uni had a team and just wanted to see what they had to say. I see. And then from that point forward, what other teams have you played for? So I've actually played for uh, the Leeds Griffins. Right. I've played for the London O's. Okay. I've played for the Vassar Royals in Finland. Right. Okay. And then in like the Jukos I've been to, I never actually suited up because of COVID, but uh -huh. for the Cabrillo Seahawks and the uh, and Dianza Mountain Lions. Well, okay, so I'm just gonna quickly um, remind, bring you back a bit. What was it like to play at the London O's? I really enjoyed it. It was, for me, it was my first experience like playing against men. And so that was like a big step up for me, but I felt like I really rose to the challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you guys, guys on the, on the D-line especially, um, and Coach Neil really like, kind of like set me up they were like you can be really good at this if you really try right and I, I really liked the encouraging atmosphere and i think that year we i think we came third in the division mm -hmm. and that was like quite a big bounce back from what i remember and i was um i was really proud to be part of that team and uh i just really enjoyed like what i learned the experience and just you know being challenged right. really you know like because there were people i realized who were better than me and I was like, I want to be better than them. Mm -hmm. You know, that was what really drove me at the uh, at the O's. So you said after that you went to go play in Finland for the Vassar Royals. Yeah. Um, what was it like to play in Finland, and what was the what was the level of football out there? It's a hell of an experience, man. I I really enjoyed it. Like we didn't have a winning season, so that was a bit disappointing. Mm -hmm. But um, it really challenged me. I think what people underestimate when they go to Europe is how difficult it can be to gel you know like american right. swedes english people french into one team in a relatively short period guys who don't know each other never played with each other generally and making that work <clears throat> and um but i think we did a relatively good job again the season didn't go quite how we wanted to what astounded me was the range of football mm -hmm. i would say for example the Finns out there 
some of the, those guys are real, real players. Um, and that baseline is probably above, or it would probably be top, top tier Prem in the UK. Right. That, that sort of baseline. I see. Um, but then, I mean, I had guys on my team who are in the NFL. A guy called DeAndre Burrell was a wide receiver for the Packers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, nice. that was the highest level. And then you had guys who had played D1, guys who had played, you know, um, high-level European German football uh-huh. who just, you know, gone that pathway. So it's a real mix of experiences, but the quality was genuinely very high. Very high. Awesome. Like, how many times were you guys practicing a week? Like, I'd say... Uh, in terms of actual practice, we probably tr- practiced f- three or four times a week. Yep. It depended if we had a bye week, uh, how the if we won a game. Um, sometimes we were suited up, sometimes we were just in helmets. But then on top of that, you've got like, you know, um, going to the gym, right. doing just extra practice. So it was a full time job. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And that's like the minimum that's, expe- that's expected from you. And that was a that was a big shock for me. I was like embroiling myself in that culture for the first time and yeah. uh, that was that was a real like learning curve for me no that man i mean i've heard a lot of big things about the what's it called the vatra liga yeah i don't know if i'm saying it right yeah vatra liga yeah. i know there's a lot of tough guys out there in finland man yeah there uh, are <laughs> <laughs> no there's some real players out there like i have nothing for respect for like some of the guys i played i was like you're a real baller like you can see it there's no no yeah. way of contextualizing of course, that of course no that's lit dude man so after that you said you went out to the States where you went to um, some JUCOs, if I yes. correct. So tell me a bit about that. What was that experience like? Yeah, that, um, that experience, it's been really good. I mean, obviously the context is like COVID, mm-hmm. but so I've, I've, I'm, I've been at one junior college, I'm at another one now. Right. Um, my general experience is the football is really high, the quality of football. Um, the things I got taught were incredibly technical. Um, you know, the level of motor, the level of cardio and determination of grit, that's just expected. Mm-hmm. You know, where you might not expect it from certain leagues, certain places, that's just expected. And then you're expected to have a massive technical proficiency and basically you, you push yourself. You know, it's very self-motivating in JUCO from what I found. Um, I think once you get to a D1 or a D2 or any college program, it's almost a bit more you're taken under the wing of the program you're taken along, but with JUCO, you've got to do the work. That was the big thing I I noticed. But there are a lot of guys there willing to do the work to get out. You know, so it was it was a good a good atmosphere. It has been at the, both the places I've been at. That man, look. And what were the names of the college you said you went? So I went you're to at right now. Uh, so uh, right now I'm at a place called Dianza College in awesome. uh, Cupertino. Awesome man, bro. Like uh, I wish you the best uh, with that going forward, dude. Yeah. How important is training to you? Um. I think it, it's really important actually when I think about it, especially during lockdown when I couldn't train the way I specifically wanted to. Honestly, part of me started to get really down, started to worry, oh, I'm not in my best place, I'm not in this. But I kind of realized that the, the important thing about training is how hard you push yourself. Yeah. You know, So for me, it was focusing on my cardio, on my plyometrics, on um, stuff like even my straight line speed. And I think the, the important thing with training for me is pushing myself in things that I'm not necessarily, not naturally good at, but that I don't lean to. I know I'm, I'm good at weights, I'm good at the gym, but like so is every other D1 guy out there. I've got to have the best motor, right. the, best, um, the best cardio and, and show up on film. And I think the proof for the pudding, the proof is in the pudding in terms of training, in terms of your film. I mean, even recording myself, watching myself do reps, I watch myself get better. What is your motivation? Like, why are you doing this sport and not anything else? Um, that's a very tough question. I think initially for me, what attracted me to football was the camaraderie. You know, I, I met a really good group of friends at university. I ended up living with them for two years. Um, and it was playing with the boys, as silly as that sounds. And you know what? Every team I've been on that I've enjoyed and everything, the best part, it's not even necessarily the winning. It's about playing with your teammates, playing with men who mm. are willing to put themselves on the line and maybe hurt. And you know what? Maybe even die. Like people die playing our sport, you know? And that for me is really important. But like, I guess personally, I guess football is a way of training myself in my, my, my cardio, my lifting, and also, but also my, my sort of spirit, right. pushing myself the hardest I could be beyond what I thought was I was capable of. I don't think there are many sports that can really 
do that in the same way, that can test your moral and your physical courage in the same way. I got you. I got you. No, that's real. That's real. So what's next? Like, who are you outside of football? Um, I think, I, I was saying this to, to you earlier, um, because of um, some NCAA stuff, COVID, everything being shut down, I'm actually not entirely sure what my football future looks like at the moment. Right. Um, I, 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 you know, maybe I will be going to Europe, try and play again if the season's open and try and do my best there. But outside of football, um, I've really fallen in love with Olympic weight training, right. especially weightlifting, like uh, cle cleave and jerk, snatch, all that sort of stuff. And so I think in America, I'm in a really good place that if football doesn't quite end up working out how I want to, right. I can transition to that sport, which I already have some pretty good numbers for and a pretty good coach and everything. Can I just like pause you there? Like, guys, there's going to be a part where we start the <laughs> video. He's not capping. Like. <laughs> but yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I really fell in love with that type of training. So football doesn't last forever and it doesn't for anyone. And Very true. If, if, I, if that transition is needed in my life and that's just the way things are, you know, it'd be tough, but I'll accept it, you know, and, and just find a new a new journey. Um, and apart from that, outside of football, uh, I've been focusing on my writing. Lockdown's yep. made me a bit more creative and a bit more, um, I say, like, really looking at what I value, what I don't value. And that comes out in my writing, I'd say. Well, look at that guy's brain in a bra, man. Can't beat it. Can't beat it. And good looks as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, bro, listen, Jack, I appreciate you coming down today, man. Um, no, I really appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to get this. Um, I wish you best of everything in the future. And I'm sure we'll catch up soon. Awesome.